Hey there, my name is Provis, and welcome to more Surviving Mars Below and Beyond. Ooh, it's been a while since I've been able to say that. It's been, what, two years since my last playthrough? Oh, Provis, does this mean that the devs are releasing more content for the game? Alas, no, it does not mean that. In fact, I'm pretty sure this game is considered to be finished, which is an absolute shame because this game is still quite fun and there's a lot more that could have been done with it, but there you go. Now, we never did a series with the Martian Express DLC, which means that there are some more difficulty options we could have tossed in this to go for a maximum difficulty campaign. And that's what we're going to do today. Well, okay, I say that. We're actually not going to go for max difficulty exactly, but I'll explain more about that in just a little bit. We're going to get it very, very close, though. Very, very close. Now, I should say we're going to be playing with a couple of mods for this particular series just to add in some extra content and flavor than we've seen before. For example, we're going to have a new mission sponsor. Poland is going to be an option for us, and I think this is a new-ish addition to the Steam Workshop. These guys are considered to be a hard difficulty, equivalent with Paradox Interactive, so you can go for this for a maximum difficulty challenge. And they have some pros and cons. More starting funds, but less starting applicants. That is atrocious for a max difficulty run. When you only have one passenger rocket, you want as many options for good colonists as possible. This cuts my options by a third. We're going to have more research per soul than Paradox, but we're going to have worse rare metals pricing, so that's all going to be a bit of a trade-off. We're going to have extra research points for exploring, which is going to be very good in the early game, not so much later on. All specialists will perform better is great in the mid to late game, does nothing for me at the beginning of the game, and all machine parts factories will produce more, which is kind of okay, just saves me a little bit of my metals. We are going to swap out our profile to the futurist, since this is still our only real option for a max difficulty run, and as far as mysteries, I have to go with Metatron. It is the only hard difficulty one that I have not done as of yet. Now we're going to also turn off all rival colonies. This is going to make the game easier in some ways in that I have no one competing for milestones, but harder in that I have no trading partners. We are well and truly on our own. Now we are going to go for the game rules, and this is the fun part. Now, if you've ever seen my maximum difficulty runs, you already have some idea how this is going to work. We're going to go for Amateurs, Armageddon, Dust in the Wind, Hunger, Inflation, Long Ride, Rebel Yell, Last Arc, Twister, and Winter is Coming. This maxes out all natural disasters. We cannot import food. Inflation is going to make everything more expensive. We cannot have specialists. Only one passenger rocket is truly horrific, and Rebel Yell means we have to worry about renegades. Yeah, all of this is going to be quite challenging, but we're not quite done yet. We can also toss on the active plate tectonics, which doesn't really matter if you're not going to go underground. And the new trait that was added with the DLC is restricted footwalk. With trains as an alternative, colonists will not walk as far, so we have to keep everything nice and compact. That's going to be a little bit challenging in some ways, but hopefully we can find a good way around it. This gives me a maximum difficulty rating here of 1,020%. Yowzas. Let's go ahead and rename our colony, by the way. We're going to call it New Warsaw. It just seems appropriate. I also get to say that Poland can into space. I mean, I, th I think that's worth something. That's got to be good. Now, there seems to be a small bug with this particular mod. We are over our cargo capacity to start with which is weird, but it means anything I take out right now, I can't add back in. I'm still going to remove the Sterling Generator because I value the $400 million for other resources more, but everything else here I'm going to leave. We can't toss anything else into our rocket. That's going to have to be good enough. Now we have to choose our colony site. Now, if you want to go for the maximum difficulty, what you do here is you go to 41 North, 111 West. This is a 365% difficulty rating map. It is the only map with that high of a difficulty rating, so it's the only one you can do for a map max difficulty run. Now that said, I have played on this particular map like two or three times already, and I know it in and out. Is that really challenging? No, not really. So I'm going to go somewhere else that should be roughly equivalent, but it's not going to be reflected in my difficulty challenge rating. I apologize for those who are like, this isn't truly max difficulty. No, I think this is actually going to be a little bit harder, but you know, sue me. We're going to go to 44 North and 112 West. This is 345%, so a 20% difference. Same problems with resources, still very difficult terrain, and I don't know this map very well, which means I have a lot to learn and adapt to. I think this will be more challenging than before. So here we go, guys, my most difficult run yet.
And here we are. All right, now I've done a little bit of scouting on this map ahead of time. If you're going to be playing on maximum difficulty, there's no shame in exploring some of these maps, figure out what some of the trends are, regenerate the seed a few times, and kind of see where you want to settle down. In this case, I know that I want to settle down right over here. Why? Well, one, there's a vista. There's actually going to be a second vista right next to it, right about here. Two vistas means that when I do place down domes, we're going to have a very high comfort rating. High comfort means high birth rate, which means we can actually get our population up and are running, and that's super important if you cannot get a second passenger rocket, and if you do not have any rivals on this planet that you can, you know, kidnap people from, which we've seen in the past. So this is where I'm going to be settling down. There are some challenges, though. The only metal on this entire map should be located over here, a lot down here, and I think, like, maybe one side over here or something like that. So we're gonna be really struggling for metals in this particular game, but that's something we're just gonna have to live with. Let's go ahead and place down our rocket right here. Yes, I know the career AI mod is disabled, that is fine. If you don't have any specialists, it automatically disables itself, no, no problem. So let's go ahead and do some exploration. I wanna explore this sector first probably, and then just a couple little things around us. Let's get a good idea what we're working with, find some resources, then we can start looking for stuff that's more specific. Let's take a look at our research and see what we have access to. All right, so we have hydroscopic vaporators for our water production. This will be very useful later, but not now. Polymer factories are not useful right now. Extra research per soul for every RC Explorer. We have one, so this will be good. Probes are cheaper in deep scan, no use, and we can have the extra research from our sponsor. All right, so we have two things that are going to give us some extra science early on. I have to say that that is going to be pretty good. Let's take it. You'll also notice there's some extra stuff over here. This is from the unofficial content package mod. I think that's what it's called. It is considered to be one of the um, only kind of expansion type of mods that adds in a fair bit of extra flavor. Obviously, though, not an official, you know, content boost. We're going to have some automated buildings, we're going to have geothermal power plants, thermal reactors, Martian observatories, medium fuel refineries, and modular apartments, all of that being kind of cool. But we're not going to touch any of this for a little while. It might make the game a little bit easier, but meh. Let's go ahead and outsource a fair bit of our money and get a lot of early game science. I do value that quite a lot. And I like that we're going to have an early RC explorer to work with. That means we're going to get some early anomalies. Hopefully they end up being very good. Oh, look at this! Sprocket Poland! You did it! You are the only ones to reach Mars. Truly, Poland can into space. I mean, really, that's the entire justification for the series, right? All right, now the first things we want to do, of course, are get things like fuel set up so that we will be able to launch our rocket at our earliest convenience. That means we need to get things like our moisture vaporators, which I don't have my prefab. There it is. And we're going to set one over, let's say, in this general area. Uh, because I want to keep a little bit of distance away from the vistas and leave plenty of room for some domes. So how about right along over here? This should be fine. Plus, we want to get ourselves the fuel refinery prefab. I'll place that right there. Plus, we want to go ahead and hook this all up with just one pipe, nice and cheap. And we're going to need a couple of solar panels. What is this? Advanced solar panels. Generate power during the daytime. Closes during the dust storms. Protected from dust while turned off. Oh, that's kind of cool. I think this is actually part of the mod. It is very expensive, though. So we're not going to be making use of this right now, but uh, later on, I can see that'd be kind of fun. All right, we need to get ourselves, I think it's just going to be two of our solar panels to start off. We can't afford a battery until I get myself some concrete, so this is going to have to be good enough. Let's also plan on getting myself some storage. How about some universal storage in this area right here? Plus, we want to get ourselves a metal depot. Plus, we're going to need to get some concrete and stuff. We'll take care of that later. And let's get a fuel depot that we place further away from everything else because you never, ever, 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 ever put fuel with the rest of your resources on the off chance it chooses to blow up. All right, go forth, mine little drones. Gather up all the metals and build up all the fun things. Explorer, go scan anomalies. That one and that one should be fine. We also will at some point want to consider placing down some sensor towers, maybe three or four of these. As the futurist, this should not cost me any of my metals. Uh, for maintenance, and it shouldn't cost me any power because we start with the autonomous sensors technology. So this is kind of nice, and it's going to let me scan a lot faster, and as Poland specifically, that gets me a little bit of early game science on top of everything. Though I will have to say that everything else down here is a higher priority. The daylight is a burning. The faster we can set up things like the um, fuel, the better. So we'll do that. And then we also want to go ahead and look at getting some concrete, probably right over here-ish. 
That should be okay. Buildings aren't working. Yes, because we haven't built this. There we go. Now we have just enough power during the daytime to go ahead and start making myself some fuel. Now, uh, as I said, I can't really afford to get myself any sort of a battery right now. That costs me a couple of concrete. This is why I like starting the game with concrete. If you're trying to rush fuel, it's the best way to make sure you don't lose your first or second night. But oh well, such is the way of things. It's okay. Sensor tower is already up and doing its work. They're very cheap, so we can start scanning a heck of a lot faster. We've already scanned our first anomaly, which gets me a small boost in our uh, science. We also have found a lot of additional text. Okay, that's phenomenal, so we have more options to work with. Uh, landscaping, we have discovered the farm early. Good, that means I can settle down some early domes and I'll feel fine with that. Rockets and shuttles requiring less fuel is actually quite nice, considering that's something I'm working toward. RC transports harvest faster and have more storage. That'll be great when I get one. Subsurface heater, very important to find this for when the first cold wave is going to hit. That's very, very difficult to deal with. And also, better scientists and botanists. Hell yeah, fear my botany powers. It's honestly one of the best quotes from The Martian. Very good book, by the way, if you never read The Martian. Uh, not just the movie, though that actually was a pretty good adaptation too, but The Martian as a book is just really, 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 really good. All right, so we'll get this thing set up. We also need to get ourselves uh, some more power. I could set up some uh, solar panels over here and then run power over here, but to be honest, I think I'd rather just go ahead and play some immediate solar panels and not worry about the wires and having any sort of a breakdown, you know what I mean? We're going to turn this off during the night. doesn't really matter, but one solar panel I think is all we're going to need, so we'll get that set up as soon as I have a little bit of extra metals to work with. That's fine and dandy. Next anomaly should be coming up very shortly. We have done the Earth Mars Initiative, so that's more science. Receive more money. I do do like that. But we're going to go ahead and also get things like the fuel up and a running. Sounds good for me. Still not done with scanning. There it is. All right. So the Vista's not right here. I guess it's technically considered to be in this sector, like right in the corner right here. But we do find another anomaly. That's going to be good. So we'll take care of that as soon as we are able. Some rare metals are nearby. That's going to be good. And some more concrete. I like it. We will take all of that. What do we get here? More technologies are unlocked. All right. So um, discover six planetary anomalies could be good. Again, we shouldn't have any competition for these, so that's going to be kind of helpful for me. Uh, oxygen production increase is good, but not right now. Decommission protocol makes my life easier. Drone hubs have extra drones. I like that. Extractor amplification. Okay. And then we also have life from Mars. More applicants. Oh my god, yes. Yes, yes, yes. This is something you really want to get before you bring back your first passenger rocket. Since you're only going to get one, you want as many applicants as possible. All right, so at this point, we should find that we are now going to be producing some of our metals, and we should be looking pretty good for a couple resources. We're going to have concrete, and we're going to have fuel. I like all of that. With the RC Commander, there's not a lot to do right now. I would love to get an RC Transport, but until we research some of these areas and actually find some extra resources, there's not a lot to do except just, you know, kind of gather up everything I've got here at the moment. We could, in uh, our kind of interim period, go ahead and flatten out some big areas, get rid of some of these big rocks, make room for more of the domes. This is not a high priority, it's just a thing we can do. Explore AI is done. That's going to boost my science up to 1,350 to start. That's not bad. That means we should be able to knock out these in the next couple of souls. Drones and rovers moving faster is kind of nice. Remember, as you research some of these technologies, you're going to start discovering the next in the queue. So the more research you do in a particular category, the more options you will find. And that can be helpful when you are searching for something particular. Find those cheap ones, just knock them out, unlock some of these new options. Uh, all right, so there's the vista I was talking about. Perfect. So if we're doing this right, I think we could set up one dome right here and get double vista that is so much extra comfort, we will absolutely be able to start having babies very aggressively. I like that a lot. What is this? Twin Peaks, a new and intriguing report has been filed in an orbital scan above your colony. Two anomalous readings have been detected, one near the landing spot and one far away. What do you think we're seeing here? Oh my god, reveal another vista. Yes. Yes, 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 that's great. All right, another vista, if it's nearby, could be great for me. The other coordinates require a thorough on-site investigation. We have a new planetary anomaly, remote Martian laboratory. All right, where'd that vista go? Where are you? Hold on, vista? I do not see it. Okay, so we did not get the vista. It may still be sort of nearby, but this is going to open up even more expansion opportunities for my domes. 
And I think there actually are more vistas down over here from the uh, exploration I did before. So this entire area is going to ultimately end up being a population center for New Warsaw. We'll have to have lots of little mining colonies all over the planet, but most of our stuff will happen right here in the center of the map. Now that we do have ourselves some concrete, though, I do think I want to go ahead and build up one of these power accumulators. I'm going to place that somewhere over here, I guess. It doesn't really matter too much. Another anomaly hath been discovered. Let's go ahead and find out what's going on over here. Ooh, a breakthrough. All right. These are the exciting moments in any uh, game of Surviving Mars. These will make or break your run. You find something really good. All right. Your life gets a lot easier. You know what you want to work toward. You find uh, nothing useful, you cry. Whole polarization. What does this do? Buildings require maintenance less often actually really good. It doesn't sound like it's worth much, but I mean, reducing maintenance reduces the outflow of all materials for all things. So as far as that like income to expense ratio, this is going to swing things massively in my favor. That is one of the best ones that we can find. It's not sexy or anything, but it's really, really good. So I'm very happy we just found that. Now, what is it going to take for me to get my first dome? It's been a while since I played this, so I need to figure this out. Passage hub. Connect six domes or other hubs. What is this? I've never seen this before. Oh, well, that's actually really kind of cool. Huh. Anyway, all right. So this is going to be the basic dome. It's going to take me some polymers. I don't have any. So we'll need to import some more from Earth for sure. But I need a lot more concrete. If we can set up... Yeah, right where my rocket is right now. Double Vista Power, baby. Double Vista Power! I want it! Normally, we'd have to go for a micro dome, And admittedly, they are a lot cheaper. They don't cost me any polymers. But I am willing to accept that. By the way, let's try to get a resupply right now. So a supply pod cost me some money, but let's go ahead and buy out some polymers. We know we're going to want that. Uh, I don't suppose I could fit any other prefabs like a drone hub. I actually can. And I would like to get this because that way, when the rocket has to leave, we are still going to be able to control all of my, you know, drones. So let's go ahead and launch this. Yes, it's expensive, I am aware, but it is going to be well worth it. This enables me to build my dome and also kind of keep my base running so we can send the rocket back home and pick up some colonists. I am also going to do another resupply pod, and this one is going to be just for an RC transport, so we can start gathering materials that are further away. This is going to boost things up a little bit. I have to spend a lot of money to do it, but I'm totally going to be happy with this. And honestly, by Soul 5, we're already prepared to launch our rocket. I mean, that's pretty fast, you know? I, not bad. We've cleared a lot of space here, by the way, so that means we definitely can fit a dome down over here. Really wish I could just jump directly to some of the larger domes and take advantage of these vistas, but oh well. We're never going to get double vista on anything else, but early game, this really is going to be huge. I cannot understate how important this is. Let's go ahead and land our first of the resupply pods. It goes poo like that, and we are going to scavenge this so we can get five extra metals for free. Well, I say free. I mean, it's $100 million to get myself a little bit of extra stuff, but it's probably fine. And now we have enough to go ahead and build our first dome. More anomalies discovered! Hey, y'all know what you need to do. Get down here, get down here. What are we gonna find? New technologies and stuff. That's cool. Let's go ahead and land you right over here next to the drones. And there's my RC transport. You are going to start a transport route, and you're going to pick up anything you can find and just bring them over here and just start gathering up some extra metals and stuff. This is going to help boost up my economy just a little bit. We may want to get ourselves some additional concrete production. Now, again, be wary of things like this because you're going to start setting yourself up for more maintenance costs. But I think it's fine. I really want to build up faster on my concrete production so I can... <clears throat> Uh, get the dome up and running a little bit faster. By the way, we have a prefab for a drone hub. We actually already had one, I just realized. Oh, we wasted money on that. We should not have done that. Oh, well, it's it's fine. It's fine. Go ahead and set this thing right up over here, I guess. This will be exactly in the location I want to manage everything in this area. And with this setup, we get some extra drones, and we're good to go. Uh, I think we need more power here right now because I'm now draining a little bit more. So let's set up one more of these uh, solar panels. That should ensure we're still collecting enough during the day that we can run through a lot of this during night. And Anomaly has been analyzed. What do we got? Utility crops and water reclamation. I mean, okay, yeah. Uh, new crops in the farms and the hydroponic farms is good. That means we'll get things like cover crops and stuff so we can boost up our fertility a little faster. I do like that. We'll say that that's a higher priority than some other options. Good, good, good. And let's see, the concrete extractor is done. Good, good, good. We have this. All right, so now we should be getting enough concrete. I think we want to go ahead and just, like, launch the rocket. I think it's time. I think we go ahead and return to Earth. 
So off you go. And let's plan out that dome. So basic dome right up over here. I want to set it up. I mean, if I could if I could set up two domes. Let's think about this. If I place one right here, this is the furthest away I can be and still get everything. So I probably want to go right here. And if I can flatten the area out, I can set up a second dome and still get this. So two domes getting the double vistas is actually going to be very, very good. Tell you what, let's go ahead and flatten this area out. It should not take very long, and this way I can kind of place down both domes and actually plan this properly. There we go. It's very important I don't mess this up. These vistas are going to be huge. Yeah, we can do something like this. This is what I was envisioning. Perfect. Okay. So um, I'll, do, I'll do something like this, I guess. Leave a little space in between them. Um, and do we want to go for this dome first or this dome first? I mean, they're all in range of the drones, so it doesn't matter too much. We'll make this our first dome, so I have the option to go for the underground rare metals if I want to. Though, if I'm completely honest, that's probably not the highest of priorities. I'm not going to have enough concrete to build this this exact second, but that's why we have two of these concrete extractors, so we'll be able to get up there pretty quickly. Ah! More meteors! Danger close, Will Robinson! Oh, God, and we've already got a great dust storm on the way. Good, 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 good. Well, the fortunate thing is I don't need to worry too much about this. Um, moisture vapor is shutting down is fine when you don't really need any water, and oxygen shutting down is not a big deal. If we had people here already, I'd be, I'd be a little bit upset, but right now, not a big deal. It just kind of grinds everything to a literal halt for a little while. Oh well, say la vie. And actually, when we do get our first people, we're gonna need more moisture vaporators, aren't we? So it might be worth buying one of these maybe even two and having them sent to me. Have we found a single water source? I just realized we may not have. Uh-oh. No, we have not. Oh. Okay, that is a problem. And I'm really trying to rack my brain here and look at some screenshots I've taken of a few of my test runs on this map. I don't think there are any. There's some down here, there's some over here, and I think there's like one up here. I think that's kind of it. Oh, crud. Right, so we're definitely going to be relying heavily on moisture vaporators to keep me alive, which sucks, but that answers that question. We do want to get two of these sent. That's going to spend a lot of my money, but we're going to need them in order to sustain life, so we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, the dome has been built. Perfect. We can turn this off for now. doesn't really matter, but we can start planning out what we want to be doing here. And because we built up a medium dome, or regular dome, sorry, instead of one of the micro domes, we have a lot more space to work with than I'm used to. Let's go ahead and change the skin of this thing, by the way. I wish they would add in more skins, you know? I always liked this style. I thought it's pretty good. I hate this one. This one's all right, though. Uh, yeah, it looks kind of alien and fun. Sure, why not? We got some extra science, by the way. Hooray, that finishes transport optimization immediately. So let's think through the things we're going to need for just basic life support, if nothing else. We're going to need ourselves a moxie. Uh, these are the pipes right over here, so we want to build kind of close to that. So we want to place one of these probably over Mjaw. Uh, what is this? Water recycling system. Recycle the consumed water by a dome in all buildings inside the dome. Only one per dome. Wow. I think this is part of that mod pack as well. I've never seen this. Forest greenhouse. Use the photosynthesis to make oxygen. Production is down during dust storms and night. Cold sensitive. Can work without workers. Every worker does give a production bonus. Huh. Not that moxies are exactly that difficult to work with, but okay. Bigger tanks too. Cool. So we'll go ahead and get a lot of these things set up. This will take more of my resources. We're going to want some oxygen and some water storage. Got all that. Perfect. No tech ready to go. Uh, tracks are easy to repair and trains are safer for the passengers. Train related, not useful to me right now. Wind turbines being better can be useful. One of these can keep you going during the night. We're going to want that. We're going to want the hygroscopic vaporators. I don't care about magnetic filtering yet. That's not very helpful. We definitely should consider getting subsurface heating as fast as we can. Because uh, we want to have this available for when we're going to have our first cold snap. That's very important. Cold snaps can absolutely destroy you in this game. Inside the dome, what things are we going to want? Well, let's think about that for a moment. Uh, we'll definitely want to get ourselves some basic living complexes, and we can place probably one or two of these down over in these directions. We want to leave space over here for a tunnel network, so we'll do that. Modular apartments, there we go. Modular, yeah, medium apartments and stuff too. That all looks kind of fun. I don't know what all this does. What's the Martian Observatory do? Who knows? We'll find out a lot of that stuff later. Let's go to the Dome Services. We're going to want to get ourselves... What's an aquarium? 
Relaxation and social is an option. Okay. But it does require polymer maintenance, and therefore it's not going to be as good. Space bars, no. What we really want to get is a diner. We want to get ourselves a grocer. We'll place one over here, and we want to get ourselves an infirmary. These are the most important starting buildings you can get because it's going to meet a lot of specific needs. Medical checks, right? Plus food, plus shopping, plus dining, plus social. All that's good. There's more stuff here. What is this? The toy store, gaming and shopping. Oh, okay. 70 service comfort, not as good as an art store. So not as good um, for the same consumption rating, but it is a way of getting gaming without using up your electronics. Uh, workshops, amphitheaters are still quite nice for social relaxation and luxury. We like getting luxury early on. Gym for exercise. Do, 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 do. Retro cinema. That's another way of getting luxury, but it costs electronics, and therefore it's not a very good option. Huh. Yeah, some of the new stuff is not exactly what I would want, but it's okay. Security stations will be a thing we need to get at some point, but we are not going to need this yet. We can afford to wait on that. What we cannot afford to wait on is going to be things like a farm. We are definitely going to need one of these, so we'll place that down over here. Can't do anything with it yet, but we can go ahead and just lay down the groundwork. Our rocket hasn't even returned to Earth yet, all right? And the dust storm has begun. All right, four souls! It's a really, really, really long dust storm, and that sucks. All right, not much for me to do right now, but the rocket did arrive on Earth, which means we can take a look at our passengers for this particular run, and this is one of the most important parts of any of your hard difficulty games, because this is the only passenger rocket you get, so you only have 12 people, and you better pray you get some good ones. First things first, do we have any sexy characters? We should? Yes, three, thank God. Those are important, you have to take them, because sexy characters have increased birth rates. And you need that birth rate if you want to have a replacement population at the bare minimum. The extra comfort rating will make that easier. If you don't have many, you can get around it, but this does help. Even if this, for example, is a gambler, don't like that, and a loner and a nerd. Well, actually, this isn't too bad. A loner's not that bad unless you have a high population in a dome, which we're not going to do for renegades anyway. So this is kind of okay. All right, after that's done, we go to the age groups and we say no middle-aged characters. They're going to become seniors soon. We don't want them. Uh, as far as other perks, we no longer have to have this here. We like Workaholic a lot. It's very good. Genius is phenomenal, but there are none. Okay, we do not like Gamer because it increases gaming uh, like happiness needs, and we're not going to do that because it costs electronics. Party Animal is solid. Social is something we definitely can meet, so I like that. Sanity Losses, Enthusiasts, some of these are solid. I'm not going to be doing fitness much. Hippie's pretty good as long as you get yourself a garden of some sort. Nerd's not bad either, but it's very temporary. Religious is solid. Rugged is okay. Saint. Uh, we're only good if you're going to have any religious people in your domes. Survivor, blah, blah, blah. So there's not much we can do here as far as boosting this. This is kind of already what it is. As far as flaws, we do not like chronic condition at all. We do not like coward if we can avoid it. We cannot have idiot. That has to be gone, uh, period. Really do not want Glutton either, because doubling rations is just terrible. Lazy is not acceptable. You cannot have that. Loner's okay. Melancholic, I don't like this, but we can live with it. Whiner, don't really like this either. As long as you have comfort with the Vistas, it shouldn't be an issue. So everything else here, we can live with. I don't like it, but we can live with it. So let's take a look at this. Workaholic, party animal, and nerd? Sure, that's not bad. Party animal is just okay. Vegan, you know, it's actually not bad. Um, if we go to quirks down here, vegan is solid because um, you're going to have increased comfort whenever you're away from a ranch. And we're not going to be placing down ranches, so this is just extra comfort, which just makes people happier. So, like, it's it, it's good. We should be doing that. So I'm okay with vegans. Um... But if that's your only quality, I think that's a little sad, but sure. Workaholic, alcoholic, hypochondriac, not great. But I'm willing to accept this in favor of the workaholic. More vegans, sure. Workaholic composed, workaholic enthusiasts, workaholic hypochondriac fit, and just a hippie. So let's take a look at what my current male to female ratio is looking like. We've got one, two, three, four, five men. I need to find one more male candidate. A nerd? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Enthusiast, gambler, nerd. Yeah. That's better in some ways. Um, composed, hippie. I could, I could get a male hippie. Um, enthusiast and survivor is pretty okay. Yeah, this guy's all right. I guess we'll go ahead and take this guy here. Um, these are okay traits. So this gives me a good male-to-female ratio, 50-50. Hopefully that maximizes my chances. I don't know if it's this is one of those games where if you have, like, two men and ten women that has more birth rates, technically, that would have very gross implications. But 
Uh, maybe that's the case. I don't know. Anyway, um, so this is what I'm working with. This is my crew. As far as crews go and having a worse applicant list because we're playing as Poland, this is acceptable. I'm okay with this. So we're going to go ahead and launch. The colonists are on their way. Okay, it's Soul 15. We're almost ready to get set up. We just need a bit more power to get going first. Let's get some more of these solar panels just so we'll be able to start storing some surplus. That's fine. Let's go ahead and land. It's time. Bring the colonists to Mars. The poles have arrived. And there you go. Milestone achieved. A new beginning. All right. They're very happy. They're kind of excited. We get a little extra science. And now we need to figure out what we're going to do as far as all these jobs and stuff. So, first things first, farm. Um, cover crops would be good to do. Anything that will slowly boost up some soil quality while still getting me food is technically the higher priority, though. So we're going to start with this. Let's start growing some soybeans. We are not making enough water. I kind of figured that was going to be the case. That's okay. Uh, we do not need as many people working over here in the diner. We do not need this many people working here in the infirmary. For one, is going to be fine. We'll need to have a grocer, although I'm okay with them just being day shifts for the time being. And how many people are we going to have that are still unemployed is my question. Just one at the moment. One person needs a job. Okay, what could we do that would make sense? I think the better thing to do would be to set up a advanced polymer factory now, which I'm aware currently has not enough water to do anything with. So that is going to be a problem, but we'll set up over here anyway, because that way somebody can get out here and get to work. And as far as water is concerned, yeah, we have to get ourselves something over here. And we have just enough water to make this work as things are currently standing. Not much, though. Um... If we have a... Ooh, boy. If we have a frost, we're going to die. <sighs> um, I'm very concerned about water. Okay. Um, what would it take again to get one of those um, water recyclers? Uh, it takes some maintenance of machine parts. Ouch. If we can launch the rocket and go do some planetary milestones that could get me some key resources or a breakthrough technology, like that one here, this could be good. I'm going to go ahead and take this. Send. We're going to try, hopefully, to get some sort of a breakthrough that's going to save my life. But otherwise, I think we need to end this video because we're already at our full time. So a lot has been done here, all right? We've got our first dome. We've got our first population. Their comfort rating is 67, which is not as good as I might have expected. But it's acceptable at the moment. And one thing we can do that would make this a little bit better is to set up literally anything that would give them some relaxation. So, for example, we could set up a quick small fountain, cost me a tiny bit of concrete, and that will make them a little bit happier. We're going to start growing our own food, because if we do not get food, we are all going to die. <laughs> um, and dehydration has begun because we have not got enough water. Right, we need to start producing less fuel during the day and have a few moments where we actually are able to keep ourselves afloat. So yeah, this is going to be extremely dangerous. We will see what ends up happening. The dehydration is going to make us lose a lot of sanity and uh, comfort for a brief moment. But hopefully it's okay. We'll find out. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you're looking forward to this very high difficulty, not quite max, run of surviving Mars in New Warsaw. If so, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell. What did we just find? Oh! This is going to be good. All right. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time.